Vancouver is renowned for its attractiveness and high quality of life. Its natural beauty, combined with a diverse population and wide range of cultural attractions, helps to make it one of the most scenic and livable cities in Canada. In this video, we will list some of our most recommended activities in Vancouver so you can enjoy your time whenever you visit. Hey there! If you're new here, welcome to our channel. We provide travel guides for some of the most adventurous regions around the world. In this video, we'll provide our vacation recommendations for any travelers looking to visit Vancouver. Before we begin, please hit those like and subscribe buttons below to help our channel grow. Vancouver is a foodie's paradise with an incredible culinary scene. You can find almost any kind of cuisine here, from Thai to French, Italian and Japanese alongside fresh seafood, the finest charcuterie boards, delicious taco trucks and some of the best wine lists in the country. If you're looking for something more traditional, try one of Vancouver's many restaurants with award-winning chefs like Michael Stadlander at Seasons Restaurant in Gastown or Roberto Cuporuzio at Roberto's Delicatessen and Pizzeria. January is a great time to visit if you want to attend the famous Dine Out Vancouver Festival, a 17-day celebration of the city's culinary scene with special events, menus, tastings, workshops, and classes. Stanley Park Stanley Park is Vancouver's first, largest, and most beloved urban park. It's a popular destination for tourists and locals alike, as it offers plenty of things to do in addition to its natural beauty. There are many paths that allow you to explore the park on foot or bike, but if you want an adventure, you can also take horseback riding tours. Stanley Park's diverse habitats of coniferous forests, boggy wetlands, and rocky shores teem with an amazing variety of wildlife. At least 500 species are known to live in the park, including bald eagles, seals, sea lions, and even monkeys. Spend a day exploring the Capilano Suspension Bridge. If you're looking for a tourist-friendly activity, consider visiting the Capilano Suspension Bridge. The bridge is located in the Capilano River Regional Park and can be accessed via bike or foot from either side of the river. On the suspension bridge, gaze out at the North Shore Mountains in the distance and take in the rushing Capilano River at the foot of the canyon. Breathe in the cedar-scented air under a canopy of towering evergreens on the elevated walkway on this treetops adventure. The bridge is open every day of the year except Christmas, but make sure to check out hours which change depending on the time of year. We recommend purchasing your tickets online ahead of time to help with planning your trip. Walk along the Granville Island waterfront. The Granville Island Public Market is an excellent place to start your day. It's the best place in Vancouver for fresh produce, local artisanal goods and more. This indoor market has been around since 1983 and offers a wide variety of foods on its shelves. It's also one of the largest urban markets in North America. You'll find everything from fresh fruits and vegetables to baked goods and handmade soaps at this popular destination during the summer months. The public market is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., seven days a week, and parking is free until 11 a.m. As Vancouver's premier artistic and cultural hub, located in an urban, waterfront location and steeped in a rich industrial maritime heritage, this unique destination attracts millions of visitors each year from Vancouver and around the world. So make sure to check out their upcoming events calendar. There will be live music performances all year long. They also host special events like comedy nights or movie nights where visitors can enjoy entertainment while shopping for groceries and unique gifts. Take a day trip to Vancouver Island. If you're looking for a day trip to Vancouver Island, consider taking the ferry from Horseshoe Bay in West Vancouver to Nanaimo. The ride is only an hour and a half, but it's well worth it if you want to see Butchard Gardens and Beacon Hill Park. We guarantee your time on Vancouver Island will be filled with adventure, relaxation, and new experiences. From outdoor activities to wildlife viewing and cultural exploration to festivals, the Vancouver Island region boasts so much to see and do. With a little effort, you can turn Vancouver Island into an affordable travel destination. Most of the outdoor activities are free, so if you stick to those and cook your own food, you can keep your costs low. Vancouver Island is busiest during the summer, 
especially since its biggest draw is the great outdoors. Prepare for more expensive accommodations and bigger tourist crowds during this time. Well watching season starts in August and ends in December. Fall and spring are both excellent times to visit for sunny weather and fewer tourists. Visit the Van Dusen Botanical Garden. The Van Dusen Botanical Garden is a 55-acre garden featuring more than 7,000 plants worldwide. In addition to being one of the most extensive botanical gardens in North America, it also offers many interesting educational programs for all ages. Tickets are sold on-site and do not need to be booked in advance. The gardens are open year-round and offer a variety of outdoor activities like hiking trails and greenhouses where you can learn more about nature while enjoying views of Vancouver's skyline or surrounding mountainside. Numbered self-guided tours are plotted out by volunteers nearly every month for visitors to enjoy at their leisure. If you're looking for something less structured than classes at school, but still want to spend some time outdoors learning about nature, this is worth checking out. Check out the Fairmont Hotel Vancouver. The Fairmont Hotel Vancouver is known as the castle in the city, symbolizing timeless elegance and luxury since 1939 in a prime location only minutes away from many of Vancouver's biggest attractions. The hotel has a rooftop bar with incredible views of the water and city, which you can use to sip cocktails while watching ships pass by. The Fairmont Hotel Spa offers exceptional treatments like massages and facials and access to its state-of-the-art fitness center. The hotel's Notch 8 restaurant features handcrafted cocktails and fresh, innovative cuisine that immerse you in the art of fine dining. Expert mixologists incorporate seasonal fruits and herbs from our organic gardens into inventive and modern versions of classic cocktails. Shangri-La Hotel The Shangri-La Hotel in Vancouver is your urban sanctuary nestled between the mountains and the sea in the heart of the city's most popular areas. Venture to nearby Robson Street for luxury shopping. Take in the stunning nature Vancouver is known for at Stanley Park or revel in the nightlife on Granville Street all within walking distance. These spacious rooms and suites blend modern luxury with traditional Asian decor. Floor-to-ceiling windows unlock downtown city views, balconies provide access to inspiring vistas, and the marble-clad bathrooms feature heated floors and a television embedded in the mirror. For those looking to stay active, the hotel's 24-hour health club offers a wide range of equipment, a yoga studio, steam room and sauna, outdoor pool, and hot tub. Squatch Eyes Lodge The Squatch Eyes Lodge is Canada's first indigenous arts hotel and has diligently worked to provide guests with first-class services and a platform to showcase local indigenous culture. Their one-of-a-kind guest suites were designed by local indigenous artists and Vancouver interior designers to tell stunning visual stories about First Nations culture and feature original artwork. Squatch Eyes Lodge offers visitors a unique and authentic indigenous culture experience for the socially conscious, ethically-minded traveler. The lodge is owned and operated by Vancouver Native Housing Society, a registered nonprofit charity governed by all Indigenous Board of Directors. The Squatch Eyes Lodge is the CEO David Eddy's innovative alternative to government funding for social housing. Miku The Miku restaurant is a pioneer of the aburi sushi method in Canada, which involves flame searing the seafood in order to create new textures while enhancing its natural flavors. Aside from providing some of Vancouver's best sushi, the Miku also takes great pride in being a sustainable enterprise. The Vancouver Aquarium's OceanWise program, which recognizes restaurants for their commitment to sustainable fishing practices, has recognized this eatery for its efforts. Because of this, you can enjoy a guilt-free experience while feasting on exquisite kaseki dinners or savoring freshly prepared nigiri a la carte such as those made with albacore, yellowtail, and king salmon. L'Abattoir L'Abattoir is a French-style restaurant that serves excellent food and wine in the heart of the city's historic gas town. Chef Patron Lee Cooper and his team are dedicated to highlighting the finer points of dining in a comfortable yet refined setting. French-influenced West Coast Fair is paired with an award-winning wine program and inspired cocktail list to offer an unforgettable dining experience. Vancouver Mural Festival 
The Vancouver Mural Festival is a charitable organization established in 2016 to foster and promote artistic expression around the city. Their annual outdoor event celebrates public art designed to connect, reflect, and celebrate the city's diverse communities. Explore the creative side of Vancouver's great outdoors and discover your new favorite murals, artists, performers, communities, neighbors, and more. Talese Tours. Talese Tours offers authentic Aboriginal culture and ecotourism experiences in Vancouver, Squamish, and the Sunshine Coast. Explore downtown and surrounding neighborhoods with a knowledgeable guide who will explain everything from history to local cuisine. Delve into the rich history and landmarks of this remarkable West Coast while enjoying the sights of old growth forests, wildlife, and beautiful coastal views. You'll also visit hidden gems in Yelltown, Falls Creek, Chinatown, M Street Granville Island, Stanley Park, and English Bay Beach. Museum of Anthropology. The University of British Columbia's Museum of Anthropology is a great place to visit, especially if you have kids who are interested in learning about the history of Vancouver. The exhibits are interactive and fun for all ages, but they also allow thoughtful reflection on how we live today. You can expect to spend an hour or two here at most, but if you have limited time on your trip, it's worth making an appointment ahead so that you don't feel rushed while exploring this historic institution. Kitsilano Beach Kitsilano Beach, or Kits as the locals call it, is one of the most popular beaches in Vancouver, especially in the warm summer months. Whether you're into water sports, sunbathing, beachfront jogging, or just dipping your toes in the water, Kids has you covered, with stunning views of the nearby mountains sealing the deal. Call ahead to bag a table with ocean views at the Boathouse restaurant. Try the spicy yam fries or the perfectly crispy calamari for your appetizer while gazing out over the Pacific Ocean. English Bay Beach English Bay Beach, also called First Beach, is the most populated beach area in Vancouver's downtown area. The Stanley Park seawall a popular running and biking route runs along the east side of the beach. English Bay is where Vancouver's annual January polar bear swim takes place. Yes, hundreds of Vancouverites really do go swimming in the freezing ocean the morning of January 1st each year. English Bay is also home to the city's annual celebration of Light Fireworks Festival. The festival takes place on three separate nights in late July and early August. There is no bad time to visit Vancouver, but the best times to visit are from March to May and from September to November when the weather is mild and hotel rooms can be found at bargain rates. Summer is the most popular time thanks to the promise of warmer weather. However, if you're planning a trip then, make sure to reserve your hotel room at least two to three weeks in advance. If winter sports are your main motivation, Vancouver makes a great home base. But for those of you looking to see the city, December to February is probably not the best time. Although hotel prices are at their lowest during the winter, temperatures in the 30s and 40s, as well as frequent rain showers, can put a damper on your trip. If whale watching is your thing, the best time to go is between April and November. Consider attending the Vancouver International Jazz Festival in June, the Vancouver Marathon in May, the Vancouver Pride Parade in July or August, or the Chinese New Year, which occurs between January and February. That sums up our travel guide for your adventure in Vancouver. If you enjoyed the video and you want to watch more videos like this, show your support by hitting those like and subscribe buttons below. Also, feel free to leave a comment if you have any recommendations for future videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay tuned for more soon.